Hey y'all, it's Chloe and we're back with another video. You guys, listen. I know I said I was going to have y'all some reviews for Couples Retreat, okay? I've been watching, I've been watching, I've been watching. And then, you know, like, bam. It's time to get the reviews going, okay? It's time to get the reviews going, so here I am, okay? We missed episode one, two, and now we're on three. So I'm going to sum up my summary for these couples so far. And we're going to get into some things about them. And then we're going to be back next week with a full review for the episode, okay? And yes, this is going to be a rant. Yes, it's definitely going to be a rant. So if you are tired of hearing me yell and scream at the camera, you probably should click off now. <laughs> because this is one of those videos, y'all. It definitely is, okay? Okay. So first, I want to start off with Nick and Kiona. Nick is a child. He needs to grow up, okay? This basketball stardom that he has has gone completely to his head to the point where he feels like everything she is saying is invalid. Okay, how do you claim to be a great father? You know, from like the pictures on Instagram, you look like a great freaking father. But when you, when she asks you to take the kids to school, get the kids ready and watch your own daggone kids, you sit here and say, you don't know if you can do that. You literally sit there and say, okay, I, I got you, I got you. And then she calls you out and say that she doesn't believe the fact that you're going to do that. And you're like, I mean, I don't know, we're going to have to see. What do you mean you're going to have to see? Those are your kids. Why are you so mad that she's calling you out on being a father and you complaining about doing father stuff? All she wants is you to support her and go into school, but you don't even know what she's going to school for. But you're so attentive. You a great father? You a great fiance? Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way how. Actions speak louder than words. So you keep saying that you this and you that and you this and you that. You don't take nothing serious. She's sitting there trying to have a conversation with you on this daggone boat. And you got the nerve to want to shut it down and go to sleep. Then after talking to Styles, you decide that you're going to go in there and try to sweep this under the rug, okay? Because I'm going to sweep this under the rug. I know how to get her back. Try to feed her some daggone grapes and kiss up on her. What's wrong with you, bro? And it's not the first time you did it because after the argument, the next day, the next day, you wake up, you on the couch talking about something. I'm not going to be sleeping on this couch no more. I know how to get over. I know how to get through this, blah, 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 blah. Walk outside talking about something. Yeah, how's your day going so far? You still mad, want to kiss her on the shoulder and love bomb her to death, but you don't want to have the conversation though. How about we talk about our relationship? How about we talk about how we're going to save our family? Kiona does take responsibility for the part that she played in this, okay? Because she know that she's enabled him to get away with not being a present father. Because he was, you know, playing ball. So she would let him rest and not bother him and this, that, and the other. But now, sir, it's your turn. She's going to school. She's already taking care of her kids. And you have the nerve to say that ever since she started school, she's not paying attention to the kids. It's her turn. When you was playing ball, you wasn't as attentive to the kids either. It's your turn. What's the point of having two parents if one person has to do everything? Baby girl, let me tell you something. If you're going to be in this relationship feeling like a single mother where you got to go to school, take care of the kids and do all of that, and then if this man over here expect for you to be able to drop the drawers whenever you want, boy, he better go sit down. Girl, get up out of there. Get up out of there. It's a partnership. It's a partnership. And for him to actually have a problem with taking care of his own kids, is a problem for me. Making it seem as though that's too much for him to do. Now you slacking after you done held it down for how many years? Girl, don't have no more kids with that man. It's not worth it. You going to be sitting there trying to do it all. He don't even know what you go to school for. Child, I'm sitting here like, yo, you, the, the manipulation. It's the manipulation for me. Because the fact that he really felt like he was going to be able to come in there and just give her some kisses and give her some hugs and be all over her. Oh, child, no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way going to try to feed her some grapes after she's trying to have a conversation with you. You tired of arguing about the same stuff. Well, you're going to keep arguing about the same stuff until you do something to fix it. Not sweep it under the rug like you would say. I just want to sweep this under the rug and go back about our business. No. Immediately, no. Absolutely, no trash trash that's what happens when women sacrifice so much for a man in his career 
Now he's sitting at home, don't know what to do with himself, just want to sit there and expect for you to do everything you've been doing. When you finally have the chance to better yourself, he can't even support you. You would think he would be like ready to be, you know, be father of the year like he portrayed himself to be on Instagram. But would he do that? Absolutely no. I'd rather just take a picture of my kids going to school than actually have to get them ready to take them to school. How about you go pay somebody to do it then? If you got a big old problem with the fact that she's trying to get her study on to better herself for her kids. And if that's going to be your wife, she's doing this for y'all. Not just for you. He's, uh, the, the men, this, the men, the men, it's the audacity for me. The audacity, okay? Styles P and I, Ijoa, they're fine. Let me tell you something about Styles P and Ijoa. I watched them go through their term oil and everything on marriage boot camp, so I know their history. I know about the loss of their child. I know about a lot of things that they've been through. And I can honestly say that they have been working and working and working at this relationship for a long time. And I'm so happy to be able to see them grow and, you know, accept their faults in their relationship and at least try to do better and try to help the younger couples, okay? Um, but... It's nothing that nothing that they can get from this couple's retreat that they haven't already gotten from marriage boot camp, okay? I really feel like they just up here for a check at this point, okay? Because it's like, whatever, y'all can say whatever y'all want to say. They going to be happily married at the end of the day, point blank and period, okay? So I'm here for them still working on their marriage because at the end of the day, you can go to counseling and therapy and everything for as long as you are married. So I'm here for them to continuing to work on their marriage, okay? continuing to work on their marriage. Now, let me tell you something about Shamaria and Ronnie. Y'all not gonna come up here and act like y'all a perfect couple, okay? Because y'all keep skating around everything that happened in the past, okay? Shamari, what happened with the girlfriend that you moved out of the house with and that you was living, um, that you moved out of your house to go live with? What happened between y'all two? Okay, Ronnie, when are we ever gonna really get down to the, the feelings that you had about this whole situation? Okay, I really need a little bit more because y'all want to bring up the love language test and this, that, and the other, but we didn't see y'all take no tests. We didn't get to hear how y'all communicate. Say, look, it's always the ones that's ready to give out the vice with all the skeletons in their closet, okay? Now, I know y'all know that ain't no marriage perfect, but you keep twiddling, you keep tiptoeing around. Oh, you want to keep that woman out of your relationship? You don't need no extra people in a relationship like me. And Okay, well, give her some solid advice. Tell her what really happened. Explain to Michael what's going on so that we can get down to the bottom of this, okay? Because y'all keep tiptoeing about all the things that happened in the past, baby, and y'all supposed to be in such a great place, but something is telling me deep down inside that either y'all here for a check just because Shamari loved to be on TV, okay? Y'all know Shamari gonna pick up a reality show if you give it to her, okay? Or, or, y'all just hiding from the truth. Because y'all relationship can't be this good. And the fact that Ronnie wasn't there for that, you know, that exercise with building other blocks, I feel like they got cheated. Because then we would really get to see what's the issues, what's the problems, what's going on between Shamari and Ronnie that they actually hear. Okay? I need them to go rebuild their wall of bricks so we can figure it out. What is it? Trust, love, intimacy, romance, what is it? Because you can't tell me it's all flowers, roses, and um, butterflies. You can't. I don't care how hard you try to convince me. Okay? Michael and Rada. Rada, leave him. Rada, leave him. It is okay for you to change your mind in this process. It is okay for you to change your mind in your marriage or your relationship. It is okay to change your mind. You gave him an inch. He took a mile. You ask the man to set you, you clearly ask the man, you can have one side chick a month. <laughs> Just don't flaunt her around the world for me to see. And he does exactly that. He doesn't respect you. You are just one of those girls that he was having a good time with who's willing to accept the fact that he can sleep with other women with you and still have you. I can still have someone to, you know, do all the wifely things for me. But I don't have to literally commit my peen to her because she's fine with me being able to go and sleep with whoever, whenever, however. 
And now you don't feel like that no more. Now you at a point where you really want to commit and you want to settle down and don't settle for less. Okay? Because at the end of the day, that man is going to continue to do what he wants to do. Now, either you're going to let him cheat in peace, you're going to let him have as many side pieces as he wants, whatever, because it don't matter how many times you tell him, only one side piece. How do you even know what time he used the side piece? Because he can tell you he used a side piece this week and then go use another side piece next week and you wouldn't even know which week he used it. Girl, how are we keeping track of the side pieces is my question. Like, where, how do we, we tallying it down or whatever? We keeping track. Like, you already gave him a free pass, baby. It's either all or nothing at this point. Now, I know they say, oh, you can have your boundaries. You can have this, that, and the other in a relationship. Either it's open or it's not open because what you doing with the one side chick of mine ain't going to work. It ain't going to work because he going to still want to go find more side chicks. He's still going to go want to find more side chicks. Like, the boundaries of respect that he can't even give you shows you that he don't give a F. He's not going to stop. He's not going to try to stop. If this is who he is, and you have to be honest with yourself, baby girl, and I'm so, so happy that you have finally came to realize that you don't want this open relationship as much as you think you do, okay? He gonna talk about, I call, um, she's so jealous, she's so jealous. She can't be that jealous because she let you sleep with someone. 12 girls a year. She's not that jealous, okay? Come on now. She's not that jealous. She just wants you to respect her. She understands that you're going to go out here. She understands that you're a man with money. She understands that girls are throwing themselves out here. Out here. And she's willing to deal with the fact that you won't want to slip up every now and then. And so instead of me sitting here getting my heart broke every time you decide to cheat on me, I might as well give you a pass. Because that's what she's doing. She's giving him a pass so she don't have to look stupid in the public because he will continue to embarrass her. Not realizing that he's embarrassed to her still. Girl, leave him. Leave him. You deserve better. Point blank, period. That man, if you told that man you want to be in a committed relationship with no side pieces, no nothing, he will throw you to the curb so fast and go find him another one who's willing to be in an open relationship. What we done with here? We went from you can have as many girls as you want to one girl a month to now just me. That man not going to settle for that. He didn't even settle for the one girl a month. You think he about to settle for just you? No. No. <laughs> no. And even if he said it out of his mouth, he will still cheat. The simple fact that anybody wants to sleep with Michael Blackson is beyond me. But okay, go off, sis. Go off. Ciao. Whew. Let me tell you something. Daniel, how old is Daniel? How, how old is Daniel? Because Daniel is working on my nerves. Working on my last nerve. And just you, you, you smarter than this, sis. I know you is. You gotta be. Because let me tell you something. Y'all been in a relationship for eight freaking months. I mean, eight freaking months. And he was always saying, oh, I don't love her. What we doing this for? This is not about love. I don't love her. What do you mean you don't love her? It don't take a whole year for you to find out if you love somebody or not. Y'all been together for eight months. You rounded up as closer than to as closer to a year than not. So what are you talking about? And just you want to sit there and make it seem like you're not in love with him. But baby girl, every time he say he's not in love with you, I see your heart break every single time. Every single time. The fact that he says things to get under your skin is bothering me. I think he's literally just saying he don't love you just to keep getting under your skin. For him to sit there and be like, oh, I just want her to be quiet. Well, I got to take this test for? I don't love her. What's your love? What's your, what does my love feel like to you? It don't feel like love because it ain't. What's his intentions with you, Jess? What do he want from you, Jess? If y'all been in a relationship for eight months and he don't even love you, God knows how long it'll take for y'all to actually get to a point where y'all get engaged. And then God knows how long it'll take before y'all get married. He's not affectionate with you. He's not, he don't love you. What are we doing? No, 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 seriously. What are we doing? How could you be in a relationship for eight months and y'all not affectionate? That's the best time to be affectionate. Y'all still in the honeymoon phase. Y'all should be ready to hump every time y'all see each other. 
Y'all should be like, ooh, touching, 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 nonstop. This is the phase where it's like everything is great. We're not even a year in. And y'all here take, talking about relationships. It's giving friendship, like you said, because he don't see it for you the way you see it for him. It's clear. He won't even take this process serious. He'd rather go make jokes with the other little boy in the group, Nick, than actually be honest with his feelings and emotions. It's like watching a kid in school. I don't really want to do this. I don't love nobody. I can't do this. Like, just want to make jokes and make people feel bad. And for what? How old are you? Are you a grown man? Are you scared to say you in love? Are you scared? It's like, what is happening here? Like, child, I just never seen so much. Like, it got to be fake. Like, there's no way. They could really be in a relationship with the way that he talks about their relationship. He doesn't even go through the, I really, really like her. I'm on the urge of falling in, I'm on the edge of falling in love with her. I can see myself with her. She's the one for me. Nothing. And it's been eight months. There's no excuses for him to sit there and say he don't love her. You cannot be in a relationship with someone for almost a year and not have the feelings close to love. And just want to say, oh, I'm not in love. I'm not, and I'm not just saying that because he said that. Jess, you are saying that because he said that. Because every time he say that, your whole everything just look like it's shattering into pieces. And I don't know if it's embarrassment because maybe y'all had an agreement that you know y'all was going downplay whatever is going on. But homeboy came in here and was ready to spill it all, okay? Every chance he get is like he has something to say to embarrass you. Then instead of taking this process serious, he's making, he's saying things purposely to hurt your feelings. The point of the process is to be able to grow. Not to actually do things to make people mad on purpose. Did he understand what the point of the retreat was? Because I'm starting to believe he just came up here for clout. Like do anything for clout. Leave him, Jazz. He's a user. It's giving he's using you. He wants to be a household name. He wants to go find some more girls to bone. Don't waste your time. If it take him long, he is almost a year. He can't even say he love you or about or falling in love. Then I would go for he's falling in love. You don't even have enough feelings to be excited about the love language test. Like, I don't want to take the love language test because I'm not in love. Well, do you like her enough to even take it? Do you got to keep telling everybody it? You, you're basically just shouting it out to the world. Child, ugh. it got to be fake. Please tell me it's fake. Please tell me it's fake. Please tell me it's fake. Okay? Claudia KG. They're a complicated couple, couple. He don't want to be with her. He's scared of even like marrying her. You can tell from the time where they was in the bathroom talking that he was basically telling her like she's going to keep waiting for the ring, okay? He says that the problem that they have is that she's always on her laptop, okay? She goes to sleep with the laptop. She wakes up with the laptop. She just, you know, is like focused on the laptop. But he understands because that's how she makes her money. When he goes into the session, okay, he goes to give her a kiss on the cheek. Be like, why are we kissing on the cheek? Oh, because I don't want to mess up her lipstick. It's so perfect. I have never heard my husband say, I don't want to kiss you on your lips because your lipstick is so perfect. Then you sit there and you pick her apart about her. She may be ashy. Her eyelashes may be a little crooked. Her eyebrow may need a little more concealing. But you sitting here getting mad when she said that your food probably wasn't the best. So you can dish it, but you can't take it. You stop giving her romance because she says your food was nasty. Well, then don't cook for her. Buy her some flowers. Rub her feet. Let me tell you something. If a man wants to get some sex, he will find a way to get some sex, okay? You can have that laptop right here in the face. He gonna be like, let me close that for you real quick. Oh, you gonna, you gonna stay in that laptop? 
You're not going to come over here. Nothing. You're not going to make no advances. You're not going to try. You're just going to let it be what it is. And then for you to sit there and say that you are not sexually attracted to her, that's a concern for me. Because it's one thing to not be attracted to someone, okay? But it's another thing to not be sexually attracted to someone because men are visual. You ain't even got to do much for them to want to hump, okay? They can see a girl down the street and they want to hump, okay? But you sit here saying you're not sexually attracted to the woman that you sleep with every night. Your ur the urge for you to want to put your hand on her butt while y'all sleep don't pop up. You don't get frustrated enough to the point where you just like, come here, girl, let me take it. Nothing. Nothing. You know what, Claudia? You know what you need to do? Put the laptop down for two days. Two days. Don't go on social media. I mean, you could check your little phone or whatever, but put the laptop down. Do not do anything that like go live and stuff like that. I mean, make time for this man, okay? Sit up in his face. And see how he acts. See, see if the laptop is really the problem. See if he responds to you the same way. I mean, sit in his face. Like, just sit there. And see if he does anything spectacular. See if he tackles you down to the bed. Because the laptop is the problem, right? It's the laptop. It's the laptop. Okay, put him to the test. See if that's the real problem. Fix that problem and see if anything change. Because if don't nothing change, it ain't the laptop. She's worth the effort. She's worth the effort. Have you asked her to take her out to dinner? Did you offer for y'all to go out on the town to dance? Did you try to get some romance in there to take her away from work? Because you know this is work. This is work for her. You want her to set boundaries? This isn't a nine to five. Influencers, social media stuff, that's an all day situation shit. Did you say, I want you to put the laptop down, we going out to dinner? Did you plan a romantic getaway? Did you do something to make the girl feel like she want to hump on you? See, this is my thing. Lust comes before love. <laughs> okay? Lust comes before love. So bad to the point where people confuse lust with love. So my question is, why are you here? If the urge to want to be physical with someone isn't there, it's, it's giving friendship. It's giving friendship. I always say this, and y'all, y'all, y'all who've been following me for a long time know that I say that. Romantic relationships, the only thing that separates a romantic relationship from any other relationship is the physical aspect of it. We have good relationships with our families, our friends, our kids, all those relationships where we can talk to them, we can confide in them, we can trust them, we can love them, we can, you know, cry on their shoulders, they can have our back to the end of time. But what separates a romantic relationship is romance and sex. So if y'all not going to be having the sex part, then y'all might as well just be friends who can lo love each other comfort each other confide in each other be there for each other when they need it but baby best friends sounds good best friends is giving that's what y'all should be because when it comes to the romance when it comes to the love part when it comes to the sex part we not there and the fact that he already saying that he's not physically he's not sexually attracted to you baby girl go find somebody who is Go find somebody who is. And that's how I feel about these couples, y'all. It, it, it's, it's, it's a lot going on over here on the couples retreat. <laughs> I'm just going to hope and pray that Jess and her man Daniel is for fake. Okay, it's for play play. Because baby ain't no way it's been eight months in. He can't even say he falling in love or he close to love or some type of love. He barely say he like you, child, for this, at this point. So I don't know what's happening, okay? I don't know. I, I just don't know. But I will be back next week with a real review. Scene by scene for y'all. I just had to wrap this up for y'all. And I had to go on a rant because 
it was it was it was heavy on me it was heavy on me please like this video Yo, leave your comments down below subscribe and follow me on this couples retreat journey and i will talk to you guys later peace